to simplify some square roots in this video. Um, first, I'm going to list my perfect squares. I have them listed on the screen sheet of paper. I'm going to first find where does 63 fall on this list. It falls between 49 and 64. So I'm going to check and see which of these numbers, 49, 36, 25, 16, 9, 4, which one is the biggest one that could divide into 63 a whole number of times. So down here at the bottom, I'm going to do some division. I'm going to start with 63 divided by 49. I'm checking, does that go into 63 a whole number of times? No, I get a decimal number when I do this division, so 49 doesn't work. Now I'm going to go on to 36. 63 divided by 36. When I do this division, again, I end up getting a long decimal number. I do not want to use this. So I go on to the next perfect square, 25. So I'm going to do 63 divided by 25. Again, when I do this division, I get a decimal number, so it does not work. I continue. I do 16 next. 63 divided by 16. Again, I'm not getting a whole number when I do this division, so I need to continue. Uh, my last one I have to try in order is 9. When I do 63 divided by 9, I get 7. So I know now which perfect square goes into 63, 9. So I'm going to factor 63 as 9 times 7. And I'm going to also keep track of my perfect square of 9 over here on the side. So now I'm going to use my product property of square roots and rewrite this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 7. And then I'm going to evaluate my square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. And I'm going to bring down my square root of 7. And then my last step, I'm going to just rewrite this without the multiplication symbol. So my answer is 3 times the square root of 7, and here's my answer. Here's another example. We're simplifying the square root of 175. So again, we're first going to make a list of our perfect squares, and I have it over here on the green sheet of paper. I'm going to find where does 175 fall. 175 falls between 169 and 196. So I have to do some division and see which of those perfect squares is the biggest that can divide evenly into a whole number of times into 175. So I'm going to start with checking 169. So I'm going to do some work down here at the bottom. 175 divided by 169. I'm looking for the one that gives me a whole number. This one, when you do it, you get a decimal number, not a whole number, so that doesn't work. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to check 144. So 175 divided by 144. Again, when I do this division, I don't get a whole number. I get a decimal number, so that tells me this one doesn't work. So I'm going to check 121 now. I'm just going in order here. 175 divided by 121. When I do this division, I get a decimal number, not a whole number. Now when you're doing this at home on your own, you don't have to write all these down. I'm just showing you on the board. So next I have 175 divided by 100. Again, that does not work. Okay, I'm not going to write the rest down. Um, now I'm going to check 81. 175 divided by 81, that one gives you a decimal number. When I divide by 64, I get a decimal number. When I divide by 49, I get a decimal. When I divide by 36, a decimal. But if you divide by 25, I'll write that one down, you get 7. So now I know which of those perfect squares is the biggest one that's a factor of 175. So I'm going to go ahead and factor 175 as 25 times 7. 
Now I'm going to use my product property of square roots and write this as two square roots. I'm going to write this as the square root of 25 times the square root of 7. Next step, evaluate your perfect square. The square root of 25 is 5 because 5 times 5 is 25. Bring down your times 7. And then our last step is just to take out that multiplication symbol. So we have 5 times the square root of 7. And this is your answer.